This week on UIW TV, find out how our nursing students helped the vaccine effort on campus, plus a new sustainability concentration now available to students, and preparing for Light the Way. All of this and more here on UIW TV. Welcome back to UIW TV. So glad you could join us. I'm Emily Reyna. And I'm Savannah Studevoss. We are pleased to announce UIW TV as a recipient of five NATAS Student Production Awards in the categories of Light News, PSA, Graphics, Talent, and Director. That's right. We are so proud of the team here at UIW TV and can't wait to see what the future holds. Thank you again to everyone who supported us along the way. Absolutely. Well, we've got plenty of important stories we have to share with you, so let's begin. The Dreven School of Education's UIW Teacher Network has announced the 2021-2022 Professional Development Workshop Series. In this series titled Social Justice in Action, Amplifying Their Voices, participants will learn techniques to facilitate conversations on race, equity, and social justice. This multi-day event is open to the public and will span from the fall to the spring semester. To register, visit uiwteachernetwork.org. This week, UIW TV was given an inside look on how SAPD's SWAT team trains to take on dynamic situations. Our reporter, Frank Flores, got a front row seat. Let's check it out. Hands, lose your hands, cover your face. When the police find themselves in more extreme and dynamic situations, they call for the help of the Special Weapons and Tactics Team. Right. UIW TV respected the request for anonymity by blurring their faces. Your face. The San Antonio Police Department SWAT team is a collection of individuals that strive to be the best of what they do. It's gotta be physical shooting and, um, you know, they can think on their feet. From conducting negotiations to dynamic takedowns ranging through various scenarios, the focus is to stop the threat with as little force necessary. SWAT members are more than a team of highly trained officers. They're a family with one goal in mind, to save lives. An officer must wait three years before being able to try out for the team. However, in the meantime, the San Antonio Police Department offers a free yearly basic SWAT course to give officers an opportunity to train in more advanced tactics. Officers ranging in age from their early 30s to mid 50s, many who make the team rarely leave. Qualities such as maturity, and dedication to maintaining the physical health required to function as a SWAT operator. You know, guys who stay here for a long time, they evolve with the way they maintain their body. Up to the community they protect. At times, officers of the San Antonio Police Department and SWAT team members make appearances at school events to give children a chance to learn a little bit about the job of the SWAT operator. Who knows, maybe moments like these will leave a lasting impression that will lead a student to become a future member of the team. Rocky Real House. His, his picture, his name is uh, synonymous with our unit because it's something that uh, almost every operation that we do, we recognize him. To all the men and women protecting the city of San Antonio, stay vigilant, stay safe, and above all, thank you. For UIW TV, I'm Frank Flores. If you're interested in pursuing a career in policing, you can find out more at sapdcareers.com. UIW nursing students recently stepped up to help the vaccination effort on campus. Four vaccine clinics were hosted by UIW Health Services over the last two months. The clinics were held in the Student Engagement Center to administer the COVID-19 vaccine and the flu shot to students. Nursing students were able to volunteer to administer the shots to patients. So I had a really great experience at the vaccine clinic. Um, I got a chance to sharpen up my skills, especially with giving vaccines and talking with patients in the community. Health Services plans on releasing dates for more vaccine clinics for the spring semester. For more information on the COVID-19 vaccine or more clinic dates, call Health Services at 210-829-6017. The San Antonio Public Library will no longer be charging late fees. Instead, library users will only be charged for replacing lost or damaged items. Having overdue books will not put a hold on your card and will be forgiven once they are returned. The library says they hope this change will significantly increase library usage. Students now have another way to broaden their academic record through a new concentration. I would say in about five years, 
every job will have sustainability baked in. After months of planning, UIW is now offering a sustainability studies concentration. Open to all majors, the concentration was created when students from the Honors Program combined their vision with some initial plans from UIW's Etling Center. Borrowing elements from the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the concentration provides students with methods for understanding issues in sustainability, strategies for practical application, and even possibilities for certificates and continuing education. I don't think this is just for honors program students. I mean, everybody should be, especially when you're in university, should be learning about the skills of how to take care of our environment. While there's flexibility as to which classes apply to the concentration, students pursuing this path will need to take the eco-criticism class that will premiere this spring semester. The eco-criticism class and the concentration as a whole can provide students with an outlet to move forward with ideas that can serve both the community and the environment. We want them to be able to imagine alternate realities. This, what we have now, isn't the only way that it has to be. For UIW TV, I'm Miranda Van Doren. Students interested in the Sustainability Studies concentration should get in contact with the Advising Office or Dr. Ben Mealy. Along with academic opportunities, UIW is always offering fun events on campus. Frank, what's going on out there? Thank you guys. I'm Frank Flores here at the Westgate Center with Danielle and JR. Uh, we're talking about Hangle Day. And yeah, so uh, Hangul Day is a national South Korean holiday uh, where it's kind of a celebration of the creation of the Hangul language. And so every year South Koreans celebrate it in, in a number of ways. UIW chooses to celebrate this holiday on campus because South Korea is one of our largest exchange student populations. And so at the festival today, we have a couple of the different uh, Korean and Asian culture clubs. We have our South Korean exchange students and a number of different community and on-campus partners that are here to celebrate as well and teach others about the holiday. And one of the organizers of the event is the I House or Intercultural House, which is one of the newest living and learning communities here at UIW. It's a partnership between Residence Life and the International Student and Scholar Services. We're currently hosting several students from different countries as we continue to foster cross-cultural communications and building better global citizens. And how long is the event running until today? Uh, we will be out here from 11 to 2 today. 11 to 2. And as far as people taking uh, part, how many different uh, clubs do you say? We have about three on-campus clubs. Um, about three to four on-campus offices, and then about two community members as well. Great, thank you. I really appreciate uh, taking the time to talk to us. Of thank course. you so much for coming. Uh, for Hungle Day. <laughs> Happy Hungle Day. <laughs> thank you. Thanks again. I'm Frank Flores with DIW TV here at the Westgate Center talking about Hungle Day. Thank you, Frank. Emily, let's go check it out after the newscast. Sounds like a plan. I'm always excited to learn about new cultures and see our cardinal community grow. More fun to look forward to. Christmas is in 79 days, but Light the Way is only 44. Here's Chloe with more. Light the Way is an annual tradition that UIW puts on for the San Antonio community. This has been the unofficial official kickoff to the holiday festivities in San Antonio. Um, this is our 35th anniversary of putting on um, a festival uh, dedicated to lights. Uh, lights are one of the biggest draws to San Antonio during the holiday season. Like many new students, this will be their first year experiencing Light the Way. I love Christmas lights like a lot. That's my favorite part. I feel like everyone really likes to just like go around and like drive around in their car and like look at all the houses and all of this. So that's what I'm really excited about. Last year, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Light the Way was a drive through experience. Everyone remained in their cars and drove around campus to see the lights, but this year it is different. This year we are returning back to an in-person event, uh, but we are maintaining uh, pretty strict COVID parameters um, in line with university protocols. Light the Way is on Saturday, November 20th from 3 to 10 p.m. There will be lots of food, a markets lane, live entertainment, and a fireworks display along with so much more.
This event definitely puts everyone in the festive mood to help kick off the holiday season. For UIW-TV, I'm Chloe Ippolito. Christmas is one of my favorite holidays. What's your favorite holiday tradition, Emily? Light the way, of course, but I also do enjoy watching the Polar Express. Yeah, I can't argue with you there. Well, this Christmas, we may have our own Polar Express in town. That's right, the San Antonio Zoo has a brand new train traveling the tracks at Brackenridge Park. Along with some bright colors, the zoo's president and CEO, Tim Morrow, says it comes with a lot of upgrades. The nice things about these new trains is they're larger, so we can carry more people, which is going to reduce our wait times. Uh, they're ADA accessible, which some of our older trains were not ADA accessible. This is the first of three new trains the zoo is hoping to add. Each train will have a unique style and color scheme to add diversity to the park. This one was paid for entirely by donations, and fundraising is currently underway for the remaining two trains. Mental health in the sports industry has been a hot topic this year, but a local nonprofit organization is proving that fitness is about more than just physical health. Reporter Abigail Velez has more on the story. The Boxing Advocate Youth Program is a nonprofit organization founded in 1999 by the late Charlie Mata. The program exists as a recovery and improvement program for San Antonians as an outgrowth of advocate social services. There's a lot of paths I could have taken, but spending my time here in the gym, working on my skills, my fitness, it kept me out of a lot of trouble. So that's how it helped me and that's how I feel it could help a lot of others. Jason Mata now heads the organization and says that boxing training is more than just a sport. It's a form of recreational therapy. Uh, it's more tailored towards mental health. Uh, and the reason why I'll tell you is because I have a daughter who has suffered mental health when she was nine years old. So I, mean, I was already kind of running this program a little bit, but we, we tailor it towards you know, physical wellness, but mental wellness as well. So it's something we focus on a lot. Open enrollment began October 5th, and the advocates accept boxers of all levels. I even had the opportunity to try on some gloves. Okay, so this is one to come out. Okay, perfect. Let's do one first. Okay. The Advocate Boxing Youth Program accepts San Antonians ages 8 and up. And as you can see, you need no boxing experience to find a community here on the west side of San Antonio. For UIW-TV, I'm Abigail Velez. If you are interested at a chance in the ring, visit advocatesboxing.com for more information. Cardinals, it's time for our social media question. We talked a little bit about our plans for the holidays, but now we want to hear from you. This week, we wanted to know, how do you plan to spend your fall break? Don't forget, you can find our social media question on the Calm Arts Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Before the break, we want to send our condolences to the late Michael Branley Mullet and his family. Michael was a UIW graduate student who was passionate about acting, photography, and videography. Please keep him and his family in your thoughts as they navigate through this incredibly difficult time. good in any of this. Why do I have to look like this? I just can't focus on anything. feeling alone or have self-deprecating thoughts, please reach out to a loved one because you are not alone.
you are watching UIW TV, the ward on campus. Glad you're still here. I'm Janelle De Jesus, your guide to the latest in entertainment news. First up, the bull blowout tore up the Helotus Festival grounds over the weekend with loads of jaw-dropping action. But one young bullfighter stood out against the rest. Joy Bergen has the story. Come on, let's go, my man. Yeah. Rodeo fans are singing the praises of bull riders after bull blowout awed the stands this weekend. Professional bull rider Winston Lopez says there's never a dull moment. It's always action. There's always something, whether it's a good ride on a high jumping bull or the bullfighters make a good save. But bull riders aren't the only ones risking their lives. Dylan McManus is only 16 years old, but he's tasked with making sure the bull riders stay safe in the ring. Bullfighters like Dylan are meant to distract bulls so that riders have a chance to get out of the danger zone. So what do you think is more dangerous, being a bullfighter or a bull rider? Definitely a bullfighter. <laughs> Definitely a bullfighter. But you're not scared. What goes through your mind when you're coming out here and that bull is coming out of the chute? Well, there's not a lot of thinking time, but I think God's got my Ooh. back and, uh, you know, I just protect that guy is all I'm thinking in my mind. Do whatever you have to do to get him out safe. Dylan may seem young for so much responsibility, but J.D. Nix, the event organizer, says he's the perfect age. I started getting on calves when I was three years old and went up and turned professional when I was 18. And, and that's the way you got to do it because it's too rough a sport to start old. With a lifetime of bullfighting ahead of him, Dylan has just one thing to say. Thank you, God. I love you, Mimo. If you're watching, that's about it. If you don't want to miss more amazing events like Bull Blowout, make sure to keep an eye on the Holotus Festival Association's website. Uh -oh. From Safe on the Sidelines, I'm Joy Bergen with UIW-TV. If you're interested in more events like this one, you can look for them at cornyval.org. If you're looking for a way to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, an upcoming event at the Botanical Gardens may suit your interests. Cody Woodward got an inside look at the Frida Kahlo Oasis exhibit. Last May, the San Antonio Botanical Gardens released its latest public exhibition, Frida Kahlo Oasis, a captivating rendition of the artist's home of Casa Azul and the natural sanctuary that informed much of her work. Over the last four months, the exhibit has been seen many different admirers of all ages and ethnicities. From an artist's like point of view, we get to see expression of what kind of person she really was, the very vibrant, very strong uh, person she was. Aside from the famous landmarks of Casa Azul itself, visitors are encouraged to explore the garden further to find the six monumental animals that often appeared in Kahlo's artworks. Like it was like a little chimp, one of her like a little like a little capuchin monkey. Like that's what it was. Like a I think it was a capuchin. But it was like a little monkey in the exotic uh, in the exotic plant area. It was next to like a banana tree. These exhibitions will remain available until November the 2nd, 2021. So any UAW student thinking of making a visit should do so sooner rather than later. For UAW TV, I'm Cody Woodard. Thanks, Cody. That looks very interesting. I'll have to stop by and see it for myself. A local nonprofit in San Antonio is helping young students gain experience and skills in the field of audio production. Cat Delgadillo takes a closer look inside the program. The AM Project was created in 2015 by local artists and educators to empower young children with arts and music. The AM Project is a digital arts and music nonprofit, uh, and we work with kids K through 12 uh, to give them a creative experience um, and help them develop the skills for school and everyday life. And the way we do it is through uh, DJing, music production, graphic design, urban art, uh, and creative writing. The AM Project teaches kids art, music theory, and team building competency. The nonprofit introduces them to current and emerging technology. They expand their services to teach students and kids how to work with technology, how to understand um, every facet of audio production, whether it's understanding CD players or turntables or controllers or how to produce audio. 
but even work in the digital space. The AM project gives a new spin to creative expression while instilling values and skills kids can use in school and throughout life. We take them through the process of what a DJ is, music theory, music structure, and introduce them to the technology, I mean, the software equipment. If you know any children interested in becoming a part of the AM project, you can find them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or SoundCloud. For more information, visit www.theamproject.org. For UIW TV, I'm Kat Delgadillo. Cool. Looks like a great opportunity for young students. The return of our Music in a Minute segment has arrived. Here are just a few of our picks from upcoming or recently released music to look out for. If you haven't already heard, Taylor Swift has announced the release date of her album, Red, Taylor's version. The album is a re-recording of the singer's original Red album that expanded her career beyond country music and into the pop scene. The release date is set for November 12th. Also, it's beginning to look like we have a new Adele era upon us. The singer hinted at a new album via billboards and social media, leaving fans excited for the future. The album is set to be titled 30, a reference to the singer's current age. Not much is known about the release date of this project, but we are certainly looking forward to it. Lastly, if you need some new songs for your music li library ASAP, here are some options from different genres. Casey Musgrave's Breadwinner, Wallow's I Don't Wanna Talk, Kali Uchi's Fue Mejor, or Meek Mill's Sharing Locations. Hope this has inspired you to update your old summer playlist. Well, that's all we have for you in entertainment news. I'll catch you next time, but don't go anywhere just yet. UIW-TV will be right back. During any health crisis, self-isolation is necessary to separate oneself from others to flatten the curve by stopping the spread of any infectious disease. During your self-isolation, you should try some activities to continue your active state of mind. They can include writing a letter to a friend, binge watching a new TV series, or FaceTiming with your friends or family members at any time. If you are feeling that you are developing a wide range of emotions that is affecting your mood, thinking, or behavior, connect with the crisis counselor during any crisis or during your self-isolation. Text the National Crisis Text Line, text home to 741-741, or call the Bear County Crisis Line at 210-223-7233. Create a plan, find support, and stay informed. Glad to see you again. I'm Maria Castillo and it's time to look at our great athletic teams. This past weekend was a busy one for our Cardinals as our athletes represented UIW in high fashion. On Friday, women's soccer hosted Texas A&M Corpus Christi and took over the game with a 3-1 victory. Unfortunately, the team fell short on Sunday when they traveled to face Houston Baptist in a tight 2-1 final score. This past Saturday, the men's and women's cross-country teams held the UIW Invitational. The men secured first place of 11 teams. The women's placed third of 11 teams. Also, on Saturday, UIW football continued their great momentum in their victory, 38-27 against Northwestern State. The team remains undefeated in conference play and improved 4-1 in overall standings. There was quite the excitement across the programs this past week. Since we're on the topic of football, the team is having a historic season. One of the key features of this team is their high scoring, which all starts with their quarterback, Cameron Ward. Angelo Mitchell had the chance to meet with him. Sophomore quarterback Cameron Ward is off to an outstanding season. In his freshman campaign, Cam took home the Jerry Rice Award, recognized as the nation's top freshman in the entire football championship subdivision. Uh, what's up? It's Cam Ward, number seven, from West Columbia, Texas. We're a starting quarterback for the Cardinals, and I'm a big body. 
In his spare time, Cam likes to unwind off the football field. Uh, I like to go home, go fishing uh, with my dad and uncle, some of my friends back home. Uh, I love playing video games, uh, aside from doing football. Rather than that, just chill in my room, uh, chill with friends on the weekend, that's it. But on the gridiron, Cam takes his craft very seriously. You know, as a gym rat, he's a guy that's always in the office, always wanting to watch film, always wanting to learn more. Uh, a kid that's super eager to be coached at all times. Cam continues to work hard and definitely plays with a chip on his shoulder. Just to prove people wrong, uh, just showcase my abilities every Saturday night. You can see Cam throwing touchdowns on Saturdays, and this is his message to the UIW faithful fans. You know, bring that energy. We feed off y'all. Every time y'all come out excited, it's going to be a most of the time, it's probably going to be a good outcome. Cameron and the rest of the team will definitely have the chance to unwind this weekend as the team has a bye week. To follow the rest of their season, visit the UIW Athletics website. If you're already enjoying seeing our Cardinals perform at a high level, sit tight because UIW basketball is just around the corner. The men's team begin their season on November 9th at home against Texas State. Some key matchups include a road against the reigning national champions, the Baylor Bears. The women's season will start on the road against UTEP in El Paso on November 11th. Their home opener will be on November 17th against Texas Lutheran. <laughs> Time to get excited, Cardinal fans. Last season was a challenging one for UIW's women's tennis, but this fall, the team is seeing brighter days. So, Del Rosario has more on the story. UIW's women's tennis team is already looking promising just a few months after the arrival of their new head coach. Good ball, side. Back in July, coach Tom Rees took over the program, coming from a 10-year career elevating various programs across the nation. Upon my interview, it became very apparent that we just have a unique opportunity here to build probably one of the premier programs in the Southland Conference and in this region. Coach Reese's emphasis on building a winning culture has made a significant impact on the players. Just in the first two tournaments of the season, senior Brandon Lee Fulgenzi won two singles titles and one doubles title alongside her sister Lauren. He cares about us as people before athletes, which I think is huge. He um, always wants the best for us, so he's always pushing us to do our best, be the best people Five we can be. And it's just an amazing coach overall. A key to the early success of the program is the relationship between Coach Reese and assistant coach Logan Hayes. Hayes has played for and coached alongside Reese for seven years now. This is our third year working together. Two years previously at K-State and now here at uh, Incarnate Word is, is really great. I think we have a great working relationship. Our values are similar. Uh, we believe in what we're doing here. The future of the program is headed in the right direction as Coach Reese aims to implement a philosophy that reaches beyond the court. That's our mission. Drive for competitive excellence, make a tangible impact in the community, and graduate leaders who are ready for life. With three tournaments remaining in the fall schedule, this team is ready to carry on their current momentum. For UIW TV, I'm Zoe Del Rosario. You can follow the rest of the women's tennis season by visiting the UIW Athletics website and following UIW Women's Tennis on social media. The men's tennis team is, re is repping UIW among high-ranked programs. Following the team's notable wins in their previous three tournaments, three Cardinals qualified for the ITA All-American Tournament in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Thomas Roche, Ivan Smith, and Warren Fredegunzi are representing UIW at the tournament, which started on Saturday and will end on Sunday, October 10th. Congratulations to these amazing athletes. There will be, pl there will be plenty of tennis this weekend, but that's not all. Let's take a look at all the game action in store for this weekend. Volleyball takes on the University of New Orleans on the road tonight at 6.30 p.m. Men's soccer will also be on the road tomorrow to face off against Grand Canyon University at 9 p.m. Women's soccer looks to avenge their loss against Houston Baptist at home on Sunday at 1 p.m. Make sure to support our fellow Cardinals this weekend. 
That's all we have for you today in sports for UIW TV. I'm Maria Castillo. Well, Emily, I want to know what are our viewers doing for the fall break? Should we look at the responses? <laughs> yes, Maria. This week we asked, how do you plan on spending the break? Abigail Velez says she's going back home to El Paso. Chloe Hipolito says that she's getting ahead on homework, but plans to squeeze in a spooky movie marathon. Sounds like fun, Chloe. Lastly, Joy Bergen says that she'll be catching up on sleep. I can hear you on that one, Joy. <laughs> Thank you all for your responses, and be sure to keep an eye out for our next social media questions in the upcoming weeks. That does it for our newscast. Thank you for watching. We'll be back again on October 28th. Until then, good luck on those midterms and have a relaxing and safe fall break. I'm Emily Reyna. And I'm Savannah Studevoss. And this has been UIW-TV, the word on campus.